Okay, this is the fourth video in the trigonometry section. This is on trigonometrical identities and equations. Um, and this is possibly the most uh, difficult topic in the A-level syllabus, in my view. Uh, but we'll uh, worry about that later. So what are the identities that we need to uh, think about? OK, so here's a mixture of uh, identities and also definitions as well. Um, now, this first one is absolutely fundamental. Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Uh, that crops up all the time. Um, and if if you want some convincing of that, then first of all, you can just enter some values in here and, and just check it out for yourself you'll see that whatever angle you put in there you will actually get um you get one if you evaluate that uh these next three are just definitions uh the cosecant of x is the reciprocal of sine x and similarly with se uh, secant of x and the cotangent of x uh, this one here is just a restatement of this one, if we divide through by this one through by cosine squared of x, we get this. And this similarly is a restatement of the first one, um, just by dividing this through by sine uh, of x. Um, doesn't crop up quite so much, that one. Uh, these are two angle formulas. Um, sine a plus b equals sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Um, again, if you want to stick a couple of values in there and test test that out, you can. Um, and it can be proved mathematically, but we don't have to worry about the proof uh, for a level. And the cosine of a plus b equals this uh, thing here. Uh, now, incidentally, if we were to change the signs here, then, um, then we could change that one and that one to minuses. Um, so that would be sine A minus B could be useful. And if we were to change this to a minus, then we'd end up with a plus here. OK, um, cos A minus B equals cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Now, you can work those out for yourselves if you actually consider um, what happens um, because, you know, sine A... Um, uh, minus sine a equals sine minus a so um you know you, you could actually just uh apply that um what else there again this is uh, tangent this is just a definition this is the two angle formula for tangent and any here i've got the plus and the minus uh um signs here um so can we with these we could actually write them as plus or minus signs and then uh in this case, you would see that that'd be plus or minus there, that'd be plus or minus there. This would be minus or plus. That's like an upside down plus or minus sign. A um, bit more concise, if you like. Um, OK. Um, but um, to be honest, if you if you know that one, then obviously you can easily deduce this one. <laughs> Now these are the double angle formulas. So if we, if uh, from the left hand side we uh, say with sine a plus b, we just sort of set a, a equals x and b equals x, then we're going to get this. Um, and similarly for cosine. Um, now uh, we can eliminate um, either cosine or sine from there by using this identity here. It's a bit of substitution there is going to give us these. Um, and these. These crop up all the time. All you know, the, 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 these are these are, are really important identities. And um, tan two x equals tan two tan x over one minus tan squared x. Yeah, of course that's just this one here with alpha equals x and beta equals x. Okay, so uh, just going back to this sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. Um, then a bit more rationale, which may help, uh, may be useful, and may help you to to remember it as well. <clears throat> I don't think I have any trouble remembering it, as, to be honest. But um, it is this: if we imagine this is the unit circle, um, and the so this hypotenuse here is of length one, and we're considering this angle theta here between the horizontal and the hypotenuse. <clears throat> Then this uh, this this vertical length here <clears throat> is going to be sine theta. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so it's just going to be the hypotenuse over over one. So I'm just going to sine theta, and therefore this length, horizontal length here, is correspondingly cosine of theta. Okay, so if we then just think of this in terms of Pythagoras, um, <coughs> sine squared plus cos squared equals this length squared, and this is one, um, so one squared. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. Now I've just shown you there for, um, for uh, the acute angles. Uh, I mean, this identity can be used for... Um, for non-acute angles as well, but uh, we, we don't need to do that now. Well, I'm just going to do some examples here of um, identities. Now, in identities, we're actually, these questions tend to be about restating um, an expression or possibly an, uh, an equation. Um, so um, let's have a look. Show that the equation tan 2x equals 5 sine 2x can be written in this form. 1 minus 5 cos 2x times sine 2x equals 0. <clears throat> right. So, uh, I mean, we now the thing with these is that there, there's lots of routes you can go down, lots of things, lots of identities you can apply. Um, but... You know, in order to do the thing most efficiently, you kind of need a little bit of a little bit of a plan. You need to make a few observations about what you're trying to achieve. So, so first of all, um, first thing I'm looking at here is is that the angles here, um, here and here as well, of course, they're all they're all double angles, two x. Uh, so the the angle is actually invariant. So the, in the sense, of the fact that it's two x is is irrelevant. <laughs> We're just going to deal with two x. Um, as if it were theta or, or or anything else. No need for any any uh, any identities to actually to expand sine two x. Um, now the other thing is that um, uh, we've got tangent in this this original uh, equation here, and it's not there. Now san tan is just made up of sine and cosine, so it looks pretty likely that we're going to have to use this. Um, this identity here um, and, and substitute it in somehow. So we're going, to, we're going to get rid of this tan 2x. So let's have a look. So what have we done? We've done exactly that in the first step. Sine 2x divided by cos 2x, that it is tan 2x, equals 5 sine 2x, right-hand side. Um, and then if we just multiply cross-multiply this cosine of 2x, we're going to get this. Sine 2x equals 5 sine 2x cos 2x. Get all, all the uh, terms on one side of the equation, like this. And then factorise it like that. Job done. Now, this is part of a <coughs> of a, uh, a two-part question. Um, um, we're not going to cover the second part just yet. Um, let's just have a look at this next one here. OK, um, show that the equation 2 sine x equals 4 cosine of x minus 1 over tan x can be expressed in the form of this. Right, so again, uh, the, everything's x. So uh, we're not going to need our double angle formulas in, uh, in this one either. Uh, now, uh, uh, we've got tan in the first one. We've got no tan and no sine in the second one. So that's kind of saying we're going to need, we're going to try and get tan out of it. We're also going to get sine out of it. But the way we tend to do this is we tend to convert the tan to sine and cosine. And then we'll use the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one in order to, to um, convert from sine into cosine. So let's have a look. Well, first of all, you're going to cross multiply the tan x over to the left hand side. And, and then we're going to uh, expand uh, this or translate this into sine x over cosine of x. Cross multiply through by cosine of x. It's going to give us this on the right hand side and this on the left. Um, now, uh, at this point, yeah, we've still got our sine squared in. We want to try and um, get that converted over to something 
you know what that is. Well, obviously, cos squared x. Uh, so uh, sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. So that is the sine squared plus cosine squared identity, isn't it? So, um, all right, OK, from there, really, all we do is kind of expand out this, move everything over to one side of the equation, and we end up with this. <clears throat> Again, this is part one of a two-part question. And in this particular case, so see what we've got here is actually quadratic in in cosine. So uh, this actually be this then is actually a suitable form to solve. So and uh, that is the nature of many of these things. If we try to solve this equation um like that, um well, quite be quite difficult unless we converted it to to this and once we've converted it to this then it becomes uh, relatively straightforward okay so uh keep going down here this one here show that the equation three sine squared x plus seven sine x equals cosine squared of x minus four um again no double angle formulas needed here everything's in x and in, in fact, the only conversion we've got here is we've got a cosine squared x. And uh, um, this equation, which is quadratic in sine x, um, obviously doesn't have cosine in it. So this one's really straightforward. Um, so all we're doing is converting that by using our sine squared plus cosine squared identity. Yeah, and then rearranging that is going to give us the answer that we need. Right, <clears throat> that is that. Now, this this last one um, here um, is um, it, we do have double angle formula required because we've got cos two theta, it's cosine two theta as well, in terms of sine theta. Well. <clears throat> Okay, well, this one's not too bad either because um, starting off with this, if we just use our cosine two theta identity, we can put this in. Okay, so we've now converted our, our, our double angle into single angles, um, but we've still got our cosine squared in there. Um, so, uh, so if we expand that, we've got six cosine squared theta here. And again, we can use our sine squared cosine squared identity, substitute it in there and uh, we'll expand and rearrange. And we get this uh, thing here. Again, this is a quadratic in sine theta. OK, so... Um, now, I'm going to stop there. Um, so there's a few things to think about there. Um, in part B of the video, I'm going to go over solving equations, which invariably arise from, um, you know, sort of doing some kind of uh, identity um, transformation, first of all, to give us a solvable equation. So... That's the nature of that, uh, but we'll cover that in part B. So uh, thanks for listening.